Recently, we learned that Joe Manchin uh, finally put the stake in the heart of Build Back Better officially. And um, the correct point that everybody was making in the wake of that is, hey, all the progressives who ultimately voted to delink the bills, the traditional infrastructure bill from the reconciliation bill, how do you feel? Are you embarrassed? Do you feel pathetic? Because you should feel embarrassed, and you are pathetic. Um, now, to be fair, there were six House progressives uh, who were like, I'm not, no, they're, we're sticking to the original deal. We're not going to vote for the traditional infrastructure bill unless reconciliation goes too. All the other ones folded and caved and said, we'll take Biden at his word when he says I'll, get, I'll be able to get Manchin. I'll be able to get the votes through the Senate. Well, he lied like he does all the time. Manchin lied too, like he does all the time. And um, you guys were shown to be naive rubes at best. Well, since then, Jayapal has given some interviews. And um, you are not going to believe what she had the nerve to say. Take a look at this. So Ida Chavez um, says, Jayapal says she has no regrets about the Progressive Caucus letting the bipartisan infrastructure bill pass and relying on Manchin's word alone. I love the warning underneath. Heads up, conversations like this can be intense. Don't forget the human behind the screen. Thank you, Twitter. God, they're so annoying. But she says very clearly, look, I have no regrets. No regrets? The strategy empirically, objectively failed. The goal was to get through the traditional infrastructure bill and the reconciliation bill. Build back better. You didn't get reconciliation through. You didn't get build back better through. You weren't even able to keep it at the original number that you agreed to in the framework. It got reduced. Again, for like the fifth or sixth time. What do you mean you have no regrets? What does that mean you have no regrets? Does that mean you like losing? That, that has to be what it means. Because, and here's the major takeaway here, guys. What is Jayapal letting you know? She's letting you know, I'll do it again. What do you mean you'll do it again? Meaning, I'll act like I'm being principled and I'm fighting on the right side of things, and then I'll make a decision that stabs the left in the back, but more importantly, the country in the back, because we need those policies, and then I'll act like, well, I didn't even do anything wrong. I don't know what you're talking about. How can you say you didn't do anything wrong? How can you say there's no regrets? We're not getting the policies that were in Build Back Better. If we're not getting the policies, that is an abject failure in every way imaginable. That's the thought about this that's driving me crazy. Is that Jayapal's admitting the next time there's a fight, we might posture like we're going to draw a hard line, but then ultimately we won't draw a hard line. And then when that fails again, I'll turn around and say, I don't have any regrets. We played it right. So in other words, the Democrats are professional losers. Professional losers. She had a tweet like, if you think I'm going to stop fighting for Build Back Better, you're wrong. These things are too important to give up the fight. And I responded and said, no, you were fighting when you kept the bills linked together. You immediately stopped the fight when you said, we're going to separate them. So don't pretend like, oh, we've been fighting all along. No, you very clearly waved the white flag when you said, okay, we'll vote for the uh, the traditional infrastructure bill without reconciliation attached to it. So in other words, the actual left flank, the six who did the right thing, were proven correct, and now nobody's, nobody in D.C. is acknowledging that the six were correct. None of the Democrats are acknowledging that they were right, and the more corporate Democrats were wrong. So I don't know how you can take away from this any other lesson other than Jayapal's a professional loser. Is there any way out of this? This is the next part of the conversation. Is there any way out of this? Oh, there is. There is. But they're not going to do it. I already tweeted at both AOC and Jayapal. Okay, if you... So you... Oh, let's keep fighting. Okay, if you actually want to do that, here's the plan. Get about 14 House progressives. And we came to that number because they, they took off like 12 Republicans to vote for the traditional infrastructure bill. So you need to have a, a block that can prevent that 12 from joining with the corporate Democrats on anything else. So you'd be, you'd be able to block legislation. Here's the point. You could block legislation with 14 House Democrats, a left flank. If you get together a group 
of 14 House Democrats, and you call a meeting with Joe Biden, and you tell him behind closed doors, listen, you fucked us. You didn't get Manchin's vote. You lied to us. Now, he may have lied to you, but you also lied to us. So here's what's going to happen, Joe. Literally nothing is going to get through Congress the rest of your time in office, unless you break out that executive order pen right now and abolish all student loan debt and legalize marijuana. And you can go down a list of things, pardon Julian Assange, whatever, make a list of like 10 things, the important things for the country. And you tell Joe Biden, you won't be able to name a road or a bridge without us in this room. The only way you're going to get us in this room is if you sign those executive orders. So we're not playing nice anymore, son. You embarrassed us. You made us look stupid. And now it's time for payback. Now it's time for revenge. And by the way, it's revenge on behalf of the American people because we're fighting for what the American people want. We are the representatives of democracy. You guys are representatives of the oligarchy. Break out that executive order pen or nothing gets through the rest of your time in office. If you wanted to keep fighting and you're on the left, that's your only out now. That's your only out. Executive orders. So, if you're not doing that, you're not fighting. I'm not gonna sit here and read the tea leaves and try to give you more credit than you deserve. Your only out is not to negotiate with Manchin further to get a $900 billion bill through or whatever garbage. Fuck Manchin. Break out that executive order pen. And the progressives need to... Lean into it now. The fight is not just with Manchin and Cinema. The fight is with Joe Biden. You will make him bend the knee. You will make him do the right thing. If he wants to be known as the lamest of lame duck presidents of all time, okay, that's on him. That's on him. It's not on you. I block every piece of legislation with a smile on my face. Say, look, it's not on me. It's on Joe Biden. If he wants these, this legislation to get through, whatever the legislation may be, well... Go ahead. Sign the executive orders. That's all you got to do. You have the key to unlock it. It's not on me. It's on you. That's all that's left. Now, I submit to you, what are the chances they're going to do that, given what Jayapal just said here? No regrets about being wrong and embarrassed and pathetic and stupid and losing horribly in front of the world. The chances she's going to do that are 1%. Because they don't have the fight in them. Ultimately, they fell in line like little sycophants. And the only ones with a backbone were the six who did the right thing. No regrets, guys. No regrets, she says. Astonishing. That's so pathetic. We need a new word for it because the word pathetic isn't strong enough. But look, I'm telling you the path forward now. And you watch. I bet they're not going to do it. Look, go tweet at Jayapal um, that this is what she needs to do. Tell her. Get a group of 14. Tell Biden you'll block everything unless he starts signing executive orders. Go do that. Go tweet at her. Go let her know. Call her office. Shit. Tell her, this is your path forward. And if you don't do this, I don't want to hear about how you're a fighter. Because you're not. So it's as simple as that. I just laid it out for you. If my advice was taken, granted, I'm just a nobody YouTuber. I'm under no illusions about my position in the broader conversation here. But if what we had said every step of the way was actually used, we already would have Build Back Better in place. Between the carrot or stick approach with Manchin, the public pressure approach with Manchin, the idea that politics is just stagnant and it, there's, it doesn't change. Wrong. It's fluid. It changes all the time, but you have to make it change. You have to put in the effort. You have to put in the work. You have to use good strategy. You have to be intelligent. They didn't do any of that stuff. Well, now I'm giving you another out. This is the 14th attempt I've given at advice that would help the left actually get stuff done. And if they're not going to do it, I don't want to hear a goddamn word about any of it. And I don't want to hear a goddamn word about chastising people to vote Democrat, when they vote Democrat, and then you do this. So, take responsibility, take accountability, go and do the right thing. We know the path forward. If you don't do this, that's it. Shut up. Because then people will and should rightfully start treating you like Joe Biden. Because clearly, at least on some level, you're playing the role of the professional loser. And we don't like losers. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.